Yo, what's up guys, it's Mike, and today we're gonna hit some abs. I did a morning workout earlier, man, some high volume training, T-bars, deadlifts, my back is, is gone. And I'm gonna finish it off today with three exercises. The first one is not just good for your abs, but it's good for your whole entire core, and it's tough. So I'm gonna be doing a hang leg raises here on the pull-up bar, and for you guys that don't have a pull-up bar, or if it's too tough for you, it's a tough exercise. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be hanging right here, and I'm gonna put my feet all the way up to the bar. And if we can't do that, then you can try some variations and I'll show you some on the floor for you to do also. And after that, we're gonna be doing Russian twists, 50 reps of that, we're gonna grab a small dumbbell and then we're gonna finish it off with weighted crunches with the same dumbbell, 50 reps, 25 on each side. So before we start today, I'm gonna to tell you about the audiobook that I've been reading for the month and it's called Fat Chance by Robert Lustig. And man, it is an interesting book. So it basically talks about the issues that we're facing in the US, well not just US, now worldwide, which is, it's actually a really big issue, which is actually obesity. And I mean, everybody knew that people are overweight, there's a lot, it's getting bad, but I didn't know how bad it was. And there's a lot of facts in this book that just really blew my mind. So I actually wrote it down because it helps me retain a lot of this information. Most of the time when I listen to audiobooks, if I don't write anything down, I probably retain about 10% of it. But this really helps, and there's a lot of good facts in it. So by the way, if you haven't checked it out, go to audible.com forward slash mic, and you can get an Audible book for free. Not a bad deal. So check this out. So you know how people say kids are our future, right? Because, you know, that's, they grow up and that's what they do. But according to this book, our future is not gonna look good. Or in the other case, our future is fat. It's gonna be like all these people like that and stuff. It's not gonna be good, man. The reason why is this. So back in 2001, this is a very interesting fact. Back in 2001, six million kids were obese. Okay, so that's a lot, right? I mean, that's six million kids. But check this out, in 2011, when they wrote this book, the number increased to 20 million kids were obese. That, as of that time, that was a quarter of all children out there. I mean, that is crazy. I mean, these kids don't even know, they don't even know what to eat, it's the parents that are doing all this stuff in the society, and I can go on and on with that, but that's another story. You know, if you got kids, anyways. Check this out. So, you know what happened to these kids? They grow up and they get, become teenagers, and they get even fatter. So, if y'all guys know about diabetes, a third of all type two diabetes are now teenagers. That is insane because that never happened back then. I mean, a third, one out of three people diagnosed with type two diabetes are teenagers, you know, 13 year olds, 14 year olds. I mean, that is crazy. You know, and for you guys that don't know what diabetes are, basically diabetes is when, you're, when your body's sugars, blood sugar is too high and your body doesn't produce enough insulin to get rid of it. Major, major problem. That's gonna lead to tons and tons of issue. You know what else it leads to? Fat adults. Here's another interesting fact. Back in 1980s, right? Well, back in 1980, about 15% of all adults were obese. And that's based on a BMI of 40, no, BMI of 85. So basically BMI, if you don't know what it is, it stands for body mass index. And it basically means the height versus the age versus your weight. And there's like a certain weight for a certain height and age. Now, the only exception to that is if you carry a lot of muscle, you know, bodybuilders or athletes and things like that. That's the only exception because you would weigh a lot more for your height, but you're not out of shape or obese, right? Like my BMI is like really high and stuff because I'm supposed to weigh like 165 pounds or something like that and I'm like about 192-ish. But besides that though, most of the average adults don't carry a lot of muscle and the reason why their BMI is high is because they're overweight. And that was back in 1980s. Back in 2011, when they wrote this book, that number increased to 55%. 55%, that's more than the majority. And that was of three years ago. I don't even wanna know what the percentage is right now, but I guarantee you it's higher because the author estimated that by 2030, 65% of all adults are gonna be obese. That's the majority. I mean, and that's only like 16 years from now. That's not too far. I know it may sound like a long time, but it will come. And guess what? You're walking around and stuff and every other, I mean, you're just seeing all these obese people everywhere. Before you know it, the world's gonna make up of like fat people, right? And the, and the people that are skinny or fit are really, really, really gonna be the majority. I mean, not majority, minority. You're not even gonna see them around. It's crazy. You, I mean, you gotta do something about it. That's why these facts just blew my mind. I mean, I knew about the obesity issue, but man, this is like on another level. So why is everybody overweight? Obviously, it's because of the food. But here's 
something that you may not know, because I didn't know this. Back in 1980, it was 1980, no, back in the 1950s. Let's get right, got the fact sheet. Back in the 1950s, about 4% of all the foods eaten outside of people's homes was fast food. That's a low number, cool. Then, by 2011, when they wrote this book, that number increased to what? 34% of all foods eaten outside people's homes was fast food. So that means if you're gonna go out to eat today, there's a one out of three chance you gotta go stop by McDonald's and you gotta go get yourself a Big Mac with some fries and a medium Coke. Why? Because McDonald's serve like, what, 46 million people a day or a month? I don't know, something ridiculous. That's crazy. That's why everybody's so... So, what to do on it? I can go on and on and on with facts because it just, it, it was really, really alarming for me. But, so here's a takeaway on this, guys. Number one. How do you prevent from being fat, right? Number one is you gotta keep your insulin levels low. If your insulin level is high, you'll get fat. Insulin level low, you'll be fine. How do you keep your insulin levels low? Stay away from sugars, right? Do not, and not just like candy bars or pastries or cupcakes or anything that's sweet, but all sugars, right? Because carbs, breads, pastas, all that stuff is carbs and all that stuff will turn into sugar. So you gotta stay away from sugars, okay? Number two, do not mix fat and sugar together. So the reason why is because fat is an energy source and so is sugar. So when you mix them together, you got too much energy and there's no way you're gonna be, burn, you're gonna be burning all of this. So guess what, you're gonna store it and then you become obese. So do not mix it together. Here's an example. If you like steak, I like steak, I love steak. You know, I had to go to steakhouse all the time, killing up those ribeyes, serve it rare and bloody, just the way I like it. But you eat that steak, I mean, it's full of fat. You know, I eat the ribeye, it's not like the leanest one, right? There's chunks of fat, I eat that shit up. I mean, I'm eating like 30 grams of fat there, right? Cool, but it's fine if you don't go ahead and throw in, let's say, a baked, ma a baked potato or something, right? Because now you have fat and sugar or carbs. You gotta stick with only one. If you're gonna do eat a greasy ass, big old fattening steak once in a while, Eat it, eat it with some asparagus or some broccoli or something like that, but don't mix it with sugar. When you do that, that's when you get fat, right? Burger, fries, and soda. Burgers, fat and sugar. Fries, fat and sugar. Soda, sugar, right? I mean, that's why that combination is the worst, and that's probably the most, one of the most eaten combinations in America, right? Straight up. So you gotta stay away from all that stuff. So this is a really good book for anybody who wants to learn how your body, how your body works when you're eating, when you're eating sugars, when you're eating fat. How's your body turning into fat? So this way, if you understand that, you can understand how to prevent it. But they also talk about all the different problems leading to obesity, things like that, and they go into everything on a macro level on how society is not gonna be good because of obesity. It ties into so many different things. They even talked about how our insurance plans are gonna be screwed, like the whole Obamacare thing. I mean, I'm not gonna tap into that too much. If you wanna check it out, check it out, but we're not gonna be sitting good soon, right? So all in all, it's a great book, and I'm really excited. I'm on chapter eight out of 12, and I'm gonna finish it up later today. Go to audible.com forward slash Mike if you wanna check it out and get your book for free. But now that we're done with that, it's time to work out because you are not gonna be part of that a statistic of being obese, and I am not either. So we're gonna burn some calories, and we're gonna shed that fat. And we're gonna start off by doing our first workout. So, 30 reps on that hang leg raise, right? So let me show you a couple variations. So if you can't do that 30 reps there, because it's pretty tough, I don't know if I can even do all of them, I'll give it a shot. You can, number one, lay on the ground, have your hand right here on the side, and you can do leg raises this way, right? This is one way to do it, so this way it makes it a little easier. So, or if you want to make it a little more tougher, you can sit up like this, put your hands back here, and raise it up this way, right? It generally works about the same muscle, which is your lower ab. But if you do have a pull-up bar or somewhere where you can hang, you know, even if you're at a park or something like that, you can always do it like this. So the way you're doing this rep is like this. Come up come all the way down. Is it tough? Hell yeah, it's tough. Right? I mean, now you're not only gonna feel your abs, but you're contracting both your back, lower back, your core, your whole entire, your whole entire core section, plus hang there is working on your grip, working on your lats. It is really, you know, working a lot of different muscles and it's really tough to do. And if you haven't done that before and it's really, really difficult, you can try this. You can hang on it, 
put your feet on the ground so this way you don't rock because that's another thing. Stabilizing is also tough. And you can just raise your knee up like this and come back down. And raise your knee up and come back down. So this is where you're still engaging similar muscles, but it's a lot easier. Eventually, get to it to where you're hanging here and you're raising your feet up, just like that. And then the higher you go until eventually you can touch all the way to the bar. So we're gonna go for 30 reps and there's probably no way I'm gonna finish all of it at once. And I'm gonna see how many sets it takes to do. Do it with me guys, because we are not going to be one of those statistics, all right? Let's do it. 30 repetitions. All right, doesn't matter how many sets it takes, we gotta finish it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Couldn't even talk, just give it a rest. And if you notice for me, I'm putting my feet on the ground on every single repetition, just because you can leave your feet hang, but it makes it even tougher. So, personally for me, I'm just starting to do these. I haven't been doing them for very long, but they are tough and they're really, really good. It makes your abs super, super strong, especially your core, but it's pretty tough. So, one of my goals for this year is to go ahead get my abs even stronger, get my whole entire core stronger. So there's gonna be some exercise that I'm gonna do in that's gonna be a lot more difficult. So if you're wondering why I'm huffing and puffing on the first set, that's cause that shit is hard. <laughs> I ain't even gonna lie. And don't hate, man. I know guys will be like, oh man, I could do like 10 to one without breathing hard. Do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shit, I wanna see somebody with 200 pounds going do that. Do it like that. Oh, all right. So I'm 10 reps in. Thirteen in. Thirteen left. So yeah, I'm feeling it. Not only do I feel it in my abs, but I feel it in my back. It's not surprising because I did a lot of back, did some high volume training today. I was doing some T-bars, working out with a couple buddies here. Did about 100 reps with some pretty heavy weight. And did about another four exercises, some lap pull downs, some upright rolls, reverse flies, and then finished off with, I did about 80 reps of deadlifts. <sighs> Only at 225, but that shit was tough by then. <sighs> so yeah, I'm feeling it right now. <sighs> All right, 13 more. Ten more. Nine more. Eight more. Six more. Oh, shit. Okay. Six more to go. Sometimes I like to do, sometimes I do workouts are a little easier because not everybody watching these videos are advanced. But sometimes I just like to do some of the workouts that I really like to get better on. I just do them on the video for you guys because there are also a lot of you guys that are pretty advanced that just want to have some new stuff to work on, some new variations, and this is a good one. And also, 
I've been, I've been doing some new exercises this year, so I'll share those with you in the future videos to come. They're good. All right, six more, guys. One, two, three. Okay, that was 30. That was tough. Oh. And don't forget guys, if you, if you don't weigh a lot and you can knock out 30 and it's not too challenging for you, you can do more, you know? Don't let, don't let me set the bar, set the ceiling for you on the amount of repetitions. You know, everybody's body's a little different. Everybody's strong points are a little different, you know? Doesn't matter if I'm doing hang leg raises or doing push-ups. You know, it doesn't matter. You know, there's some areas you're gonna be strong at, some areas, you know, that you're not gonna be strong at. Just remember, use these exercises as a way to go ahead and give variations to your workout, but don't set the bar at whatever I'm doing, right? You can set it a lot higher than that. That's the thing. Always just challenge yourself. That's the most important thing. And a lot of times when I write out these exercises, that's because for me it's challenging based on the way I feel today or just based on based on the actual exercise. But don't let it be a ceiling for you, you know. I'll be super happy if you went ahead and commented or posted a video of you doing, you know, 100 of those or 50 of those. You know what I mean? It's all about challenging yourself. That's, that's the key. Ooh, okay. So now oh, we're going to Russian twist. Okay. So I'm going for 50 reps. Woo All right, let's do it. One, two, three, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, oh, okay, oh, 25 in, got my 25 more to go, whew, So I leave my hair down today for all you guys <laughs> that I like to talk about, like to talk about the hair. You know what? I decided I'm gonna cut my hair. Not ha! Never gonna cut it. No, I'm just kidding. I'll cut it one day, maybe. Sucker! Why are you gonna hit on my hair, man? Let me tell you guys. Before I do this next set, I've never had long hair. This is the longest it's ever been in my life. Just because I always cut it, you know? It's tough. You gotta deal with it, gotta fix it, you go through the ugly ass phase. I know what you're about to say. No, don't go there, don't go there. <laughs> but, you, you know what I mean? It's, and finally, I got to the point where I can tie it up and do all the stuff with it. I'm gonna keep it for a while. Does it get in my, does it get in my face? Shit, like every day, every night, I'll be sleeping on my pillow, it'll be all over my face. But you know what? It's new, you know? I like it, so I'm gonna give it a shot for a while. So for all you guys that support it, that supporting it, thank you. And all you guys that don't, it's cool. Don't mind. Hey, all right, all right. let's do it. Come on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 
Alright. That's 50. Okay. Feeling great. Alright guys, now let's wrap it up with some weighted crunches. I'm gonna go ahead and use the same dumbbell. It's only a 10 pounder. Not too heavy. So the way we're gonna do it, I'm gonna have one leg straight, the other uh, the other leg bent, the bent leg, I'm also gonna have the weight up, holding it up like this. So this way, here's the key thing, when you're doing a crunch coming up, try not to bend your arm back this way or back this way, right, forward or back. You wanna try to keep it as straight as possible. So this way, as you're coming up, you're basically allowing the full weight, allowing your abs to use that full weight here. If you do it this way, then a weight's gonna kinda pull you forward, and vice versa, it's gonna pull you back if you put the weight back here. So I keep it straight. Okay, we're aiming for 50 reps total, 25 on each side. So I'm just gonna do one side at a time. One, two, three, four, five, six, Another key thing guys, your chin. Try to keep your chin aiming towards the ceiling. You don't want to put your chin towards the chest because all it does is just strain the back of your neck. So, one, two, three, Five on that side. Oh. All right, let's finish it up. Let's wait by on the other side. Oh. If you don't have any dumbbells at home, you can always grab anything else. I mean, that's only 10 pounds, so anything with weight, hold it up right here, and you'll be good. I mean, hell, even if you didn't use any weight, this is still a pretty tough exercise, especially after doing those first two. Great. The reason why I picked these three exercises is because, and especially in that order, is because first exercise being a hang leg raise not only works your lower abs, but also your whole entire core, really pre exhausts you. While the second exercise, Russian twist, allows you to move in a twisting motion. So it works your abs, but in a different plane, right? In a different plane of motion. While the third one is just straight up and down. So you're basically hitting your abs from all angles. So it's a good workout. So all done there. Hope you liked it, hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget, check out the book, Fat Chance by Robert Lustig. And go to audible.com forward slash Mike and you get your first audiobook for free. Thanks for watching guys and stay tuned for the next workouts because this year we are gonna get ripped and jacked. And I got some new stuff for you guys. Thanks for watching, peace.